Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This webinar series, The Ecosystem of Academic Publishing, is brought to you by Crossref and IES Research. IES Research is a team that provides research publication with an engaging voice through the adaptation of the IES storyboard of Big Why, Why, and What. We design visuals and animations to support your research findings, maximize the understanding of the discoveries, and share your story globally to improve research visibility and increase scholarly engagement. My name is Iris Xu, and I'm your host for the day. This is the fourth section of the webinar series, and with us today are Rachel Lamy and Vanessa Fairhurst from Crossref. The topic of their sharing will be on finding your way with Crossref, getting started, and additional services. The sharing will be approximately 20 minutes, and we will have the remaining time for Q&A. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the session by simply using the Q&A toolbar located at the button center of the Zoom meeting interface. So without further ado, let me move the ground to Vanessa to begin the session. Vanessa, you're all yours. Thank you, Iris. So thank you all for letting us join you virtually today. My name is Vanessa. I'm Community Outreach Manager at Crossref, and I've worked at Crossref for about three years now. Um, I manage our live local events, um, both online and in person. Um, we get feedback and we get input from our community around the world, as well as letting people know how to use Crossref, our services, and where to find further help. With me today is Rachel Lamy. Rachel is the Head of Community Outreach at Crossref. She previously worked in publishing before joining Crossref in 2012. At Crossref, she's worked in product management, managing our similarity check service, before moving over to the community outreach team in 2016. Today, we'll be talking to you a bit about Crossref's mission and purpose, how to find your way on our website, and we'll be giving a brief overview of some of our additional services. Last week, we held two webinars on why Crossref DOIs are important and how to manage your metadata at Crossref. If you miss these sessions, we'll be sharing the recording, slides, and the Q&A trans transcript from all of our webinars, so you'll be able to catch up. So this is our mission at Crossref. Crossref makes research outputs easy to find, cite, link, assess, and reuse. We're a not-for-profit membership organization that exists to make scholarly communications better. So we always say, we're not just about DOI, we're about how we fit into the scholarly ecosystem as a whole. At Crossref, we now work with over 16,000 member organizations around the world. We, and, and these organizations come in all different shapes and sizes. We have about 40 members of staff um, based in the USA, the UK, Ireland, France, and Germany. We have a 16 member board, which is a cross section of our international publishers. And we have a mess data store of over 116 million scholarly content items. And so as I've just said, a DOI is just the start. So we offer a wide array of services, some of those we're going to cover in our session today, to ensure that scholarly research metadata is registered, linked and distributed. And we preserve all of the metadata that we receive and we make it available via our open APIs and search tools. And you can find everything that you need to know on our website. So we're going to have a very a quick look around um, and I can show you where some of these things are. So if you go to our website, which is www.crossref.org. Um, and we're now onto the website. This is the main page that you'll land on. And we will just take a very quick um, look. So if we go to the very beginning and we want to apply to become a member, we'll click there. And this will take us to our become a member page. And here you'll find all the information that you need to know before you become a member. Things like, are you eligible for membership? How much does it cost? What your obligations are? 
once you feel that you're ready, you can start here. Again, you'll find a page that tells you everything that you need to know before you fill in your application to Crossref, including mailing and billing addresses, um, information about your publishing revenue, and contact details of three separate people at your organization. Once you have all of these details, you can click the Apply Now button and you'll be taken to our application form. It's pretty simple. You answer some questions and you send these off and it will automatically go to our membership team who will then get in touch with you. So if you're already a member, let's go back to the first options. You can go to our member page. And here you can find our member guide, technical documentation, make payments via our payment portal, read your reports, and find out more information about how to register your metadata, including information like our DOI uh, display guidelines, for example. You can also find some information about our latest newsletter, um, contact our services team or our finance team directly. If I go on to our Get Started page, Again, this is a page for when you are a new member. And it has some information, mostly about registering your content and starting to link your references using Crossref identifiers, which I'll be talking more about um, shortly. From here, you can go to our content registration guide. And this tells you the basics about how to register your content at Crossref, including how to construct your persistent identifiers, your DOIs, and the different ways in which you can register your content. If you want to find some more information about that, you can look at our services page and you'll find that we have an overview of our different services here. So this is our overall services page. It includes all of the different services we have, including metadata retrieval, registering your content, reference linking, cited by, the funder registry, similarity check, cross mark and event data. You can also find fact sheets available in different languages. These are the languages we have available at the moment. Um, and you can click this and be taken to a fact sheet. This one is in um, Bahasa Indonesian. So as an example, let's go on to content registration. And again, this gives you an overview of the content registration service and some details about how it works and how to do it. A page that's always useful to go to and that people always need to know is our fees page. So if you want to know more about fees generally, you can go to our page fees. And this includes all of the fees for our various services. Um, so if I wanted to know fees for content registration, I can click there. I will be taken to our page about that, how much it costs to register each different content item, whether they are current or back file content. You can also find fees for our different services where they're applicable. So if you have navigated our website and you still have some questions, you can go to our support pages. So this is our education curriculum. So this is our new improved support documentation. This is all written in simplified English um, and you can find hopefully the answer to almost all your questions. You can find a list of frequently asked questions at the bottom and you can go and view whichever subject that you like. So again, if we go to setting up as a new member, it will take us to this page, which is similar to our website page from earlier, things that you need to set up. You can also then go from here. You can cycle through choosing a new content method and read more about these things. Or if you find that's not quite where you want to go to, you can always refer to the side. You might need to know more about reference linking, so you can click there. And again, it will give you a drop down list of different um, pages that you can go to. Um, if you still have questions, 
you can always contact us. You can click this button and it will take you to a form on our website. You can also contact us via Twitter. Um, we have a support Twitter page, a Facebook page, and you can also contact us directly as well. A couple of other things to mention on our website, if we go back to the home. We have a search metadata field. Um, so this is particularly useful. You can put in um, the title, the author, the DOI, um, <coughs> and we'll bring you back what we find in our system. So if I write in my own name, I can see what comes up. And here are all the articles that we found. We found nearly 3,000 journal articles with the name Vanessa Fairhurst mentioned somewhere. If I want to be more precise, I can search for a DOI or I can give some more information such as the title and I can try and find the article that I'm looking for. So if I instead try this DOI, one has not found that. This gives all the DOIs referring to this prefix. You can also here search for the site itself to find any quickly find any information that you're looking for. Okay. Um, one of the other things you might find useful is for looking at our events and webinars like today's webinar. If you go on our events page, you can find our upcoming events some of which have been postponed um, because of the pandemic this year, unfortunately. And you can also view our past, past events and you can find the recording and the slides there too. For webinars, you can go to the same place. And here you can find a list of our upcoming webinars and also underneath recordings of recent webinars in the various languages that we've run them. For example, if you want to quickly go to getting started with content registration in Arabic, you can go there, you can find the recording and the slides. You can always find the quick contact button on our homepage as well. If you have any questions about this while I'm talking, feel free to write these into the Q&A box and my colleague Rachel will get back to you. So we're now going to talk to you about some of the services that I briefly mentioned there. So these are some of the other services that we offer at Crossref. Reference linking, cited by, <coughs> similarity check and crossmark. So reference linking means hyperlinking to Crossref DOIs when you create your citation list. And this makes it possible for readers to follow a DOI link from, a ref, um, from the reference list of a published piece of work to the location of the full text document on a member's publishing platform. And this builds a network infrastructure that enhances scholarly communications on the web. And this is because DOI links don't break over time as long as they're maintained correctly. Publishers used to sign individual agreements between each other to be able to link to each other's content, but this wasn't sustainable as publishing grew. So Crossref was formed to provide a central solution to this. Reference linking is an obligation for Crossref members. If you're a member, you should be linking your reference list using DOIs where there are DOIs available. You can see this example from PRJ, and if you hovered over the link made in the reference, it would show you the DOI. The so reference linking is accomplished um, by members and their production teams. 
with the assistance of authors and editors who add links to each of the references in their articles. And you can ask your authors to add DOIs to their reference list, or you can add this at copy editing stage. And there are a number of different ways to do this. You can, including via a search engine uh, for individual articles, which is very easy, but it's quite slow. You can query the Crossref API uh, with XML, which is very efficient, but it does require some skill. And we also have our own lookup tools, um, which I'll show you in the next slide, um, which make it a little bit easier to copy and paste in a batch of references and return the DOIs. You can use Metadata Manager, um, or you can use third-party tools such as OJS um, 3.1.2 to do this. Apologies, I haven't actually got the slide, so I'm just going to show you quickly what this look, look, um, lookup tool looks like. So here, for example, if we click this, this is our reference matching tool. So here you would copy in your reference list, making sure that there's one reference on each line, click the match to DOIs, and whenever we find a match in the system, it will bring up some of these. Again, you might want to check that the matches are correct. Um, sometimes it might bring up incorrect results, um, just if there's a very similar uh, named article, we might not find the correct match. Similarly, our sim simple text query tool. Again, you can copy and paste in your reference list. It will bring back the DOA links that we can find, and you can also deposit your reference list here too by logging in. Okay, a very brief overview of our cited by service as well. So a good next step once you're linking your references is to look into participating in our cited by service. So it's kind of like the reverse of reference linking as it lets our members show authors and readers what other Crossref content is citing their content. You ask Crossref for this information and then we allow you to display it on your website in any format that you like. You can see an example of cited by on the slide. So by clicking on the list of cited by matches on the side here, um, you can then see the items that have gone forward to reference the article that you're reading, perhaps helping you to find more relevant research. There are many online citation indexing services available, um, but what's different about cited by is that it lets our members display cited by links on their content on their website in any way that they wish. It also only counts the citations that we see in Crossref. So this might differ from other citation scores as they are looking at a different set of data. So this benefits the readers of the content because they can get a sense of how often the content has been cited and how easily, and, and, and they can easily click these links to go to the citing content. And how often something is cited can also be useful information for publishers, authors, research institutions, and funders. So once your account's been enabled for cited by, and you can email our membership team to do this, you can then ask or query Crossref for the articles that we can see are citing your content. The simplest way to do this is to log into the admin system at doi.crossref.org and enter the DOI that you want to query. This will then return a list of other articles that are citing it. For XML users, you can query by uploading XML files to a deposit system and we will return a list of the match citations. At the time of me putting this presentation together, we can now see over 1 billion cited by links in our system. You can find some more information there. So I'm now going to pass over to Rachel, who's going to talk to you a bit more about our similarity check service um, and our crossmark service and give a bit more information on where you can find help. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Rachel. Okay, cool. And I will, okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to take over. Um, okay.
So I'm going to, um, thanks for, and thank you um, for your questions so far. Um, so the Similarity Check is a service that is geared to help editors um, prevent um, plagiarism. And to do this, um, we give them access to Turnitin's powerful text comparison tool called Authenticate so that they can compare their own manuscripts against the largest comparison database of full text academic content in the world. Um, I know a lot of you might be familiar with Turnitin because you use it within your institutions. Um, Authenticate is, for similarity check or Crossref members, is unique. Um, because it gives, um, it gives Crossref members a reduced fee to use the service because they contribute their own published content to the database. And it also means that um, the organisations using um, Similarity Check, they get access to the full text content in the database. So it gives greater peace of mind for editors trying to determine a manuscript's originality. Um, there are fees associated with this service, um, both as a, an additional piece of membership fee and fees to check the original documents. And it's important to note that members need to fulfill certain criteria to qualify for the service. So they need to make sure that their content is available for indexing in the Authenticate database. On this next slide, I provided um, a link to full information about the service because there just isn't time to cover everything today, but that will give you full information on the fees and how you can qualify um, to, to participate. To use the service, if you are a Similarity Check member, you can upload a document that's been submitted to your journal um, to authenticate. And manuscripts can be submitted in a number of formats, including Word, text, PDF, and, X and HTML. And it produces a similarity report, which shows the percentage of similarity between a submitted manuscript and content existing in the database. And users then can compare, as in this screenshot, the original and the database documents side by side. There's no magic number, there's, no, there's nothing to say that 30% means that there's a problem with the paper. It needs the editor to look at the, the comparison and make a decision as to whether the similarity check, the similarity detected is legitimate or if further investigation is required. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is our Crossmark service and why it's important to, um, to update content. So anyone reading a manuscript needs to know that they can trust the, re the research that they're reading. And publishers and journals are the authority on this. And it's also worth noting that it's not bad or negative to update the content that you publish. It helps to maintain the scholarly record and, as a, um, and it's an important job for publish to do publishers to do. Um, after um, a piece of content is published, say in a journal, it can change and readers need to know. So it could be an update or a correction or occasionally retractions get reported or re articles need to be withdrawn. So publishers needed an easy way to communicate these changes to readers in a consistent way. Um, so we launched Crossmark back in 2012, and it's a button that when clicked shows the reader um, if there have been any updates to the content and any additional information it would be useful to know. An important thing to note about Crossmark is that we did used to charge additional um, fees for this service, but as of 2020, we've removed any charges on the Crossref side for participation. This is an example of, um, of Crossmark. So you can see on this Taylor and Francis article, um, I can click on the check for updates Crossmark button and there are no updates available. So I get a pop-up window, which you can see to the right to say the document is current and it displays a link to the publisher maintained version. And you can also see additional publication information, such as authors, clinical trials, funding, and license information, 
um, or below that. Here are some examples with updates. So clicking on the cross mark button shows that this article has a correction made to the original version and you can click on the link to view further information on why the correction has been issued. Or on the right hand side, you can see that in this case, um, an article has been retracted. And again, you can click on the link to view the retraction notice to see the reason behind that, which again is useful for anyone considering how they might use the information in that paper. And we make all this information available for use via our APIs. And it's valuable for anyone reading the work to know what they can and they can't trust. We've mentioned this before, but um, if you get stuck, it's always useful to be able to ask our support team any questions. Um, and you can do so using that support at crossref.org email address. We also run AMAs or Ask Me Anything webinars where you can join with specific queries and our support team will help you out with those. Vanessa's already mentioned our new education curriculum. And the last thing I wanted to point to is our community forum, which is an open online space for members where they can start a discussion or get a question answered by the Crossref team or another Crossref member. And it allows discussion in local languages to share tips and advice, hear about upcoming news and more widely in the industry. And we've had over the, the last few webinars, we've had a series of questions that we've not been able to um, answer fully on the webinar. I suspect today will be the same. So we're going to put questions that we can't get to here in the coming weeks so that you can, you can catch up and get answers to those. Finally, staying up to date, we have a Twitter account that we use regularly, a blog and a feedback email address where you're more than welcome to, um, to get in contact um, and keep in touch. <coughs> so I'm conscious that we want to leave time for questions. So to say thanks from our side for joining us today and reiterate that feedback um, email address. And I've also provided a link to the next webinar in the series um, in case you want to, um, in case you haven't registered for that already. Um, but thanks again, and I'll hand back to Iris for, um, for a quick Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel and Vanessa for the informative sharing. And actually, we do have a lot of questions coming in, but however, I think the, uh, the, some of the common questions are uh, whether there are fees involved for these additional services, and is there a uh, like, uh, requirement to apply for these services? So is there any, uh, let's say, a web page that we can actually find out information for these additional services? So, I would say the um, I would say the the best place to go to find more information on the um, on the services is this overview screen, um, and this gives an overview of the different services. It will let you know if you need to be a member or not to be able to participate in them. Um, at the moment, um, the only fee for the only service for members that requires an additional fee is similarity check. Um, but from this page, you can link into information on the different services and find out more about what you need to do in order to enable those. Um, right. So, in among these uh, additional services, which one or which ones would you recommend it, uh, our audience to apply to, and which ones do you think they are most beneficial for them to increase the visibility? So, it's a that's a that's a good question, and I would say one of the things I would know, and I meant to say this when I was presenting, is that 
for the cited by service and the cross mark service. I know a lot of organisations. Um, I saw that we had some people attending from Indonesia. I know a lot of organisations use the, um, the open journal systems tool. And we're working with OJS so that they can integrate support for cited by and cross mark during the next year. Whereas open OJS already has a plugin that supports content registration, funder, um, registering funder information with Crossref and reference linking already. So I would say that from our side, the kind of the most valuable thing to do is to, is to make sure that you're registering your content accurately with Crossref. And if you can link your references, then that does connect up your the, the, your published research to other research available on the web in a, in a, in a consistent way. Um, in terms of the services that most of our members are really interested in, um, I would say that Similarity Check is one of the services that has seen the most uptake um, among Crossref members, just because a lot of publishers and a lot of publications understand that you know that that they want to they want to prevent plagiarism and they want to make sure that the articles that they publish are original and haven't been published elsewhere before um, so i think in terms of day-to-day -day running of a journal similarity check is very useful for um for journals to be able to ensure the integrity of what they're publishing Right. Uh, thank you, Rachel. I think these uh, additional services are all val very valuable for our members to uh, not only to uh, have a consistent uh, identifier for their uh, data and as well as the uh, articles, but also link with other uh, research outcomes and connect them so that these uh, outcomes and articles can be seen by a wider audience. Um, so we do have another question coming in, which is, uh, I wonder if there are institutional repositories that they are, they are meant for similarity check. So or maybe an institutional or, uh, member for similarity check. Yeah, so I know that a lot of institutional repositories have access to um, to the Turnitin service by virtue of the fact that their institution subscribes to that. For the similarity check service, 90% of journal co the journal content needs to be indexed needs to be available for indexing by by turn it in for members to be able to participate so if an institutional repository that is a crossref member is able to allow their content to be indexed in the turn it in service then there's no reason why they can't participate but i would say from our side it's more the journals that are crossref members um, or the publishers that are Crossref members who are participating in the services, rather than the rather than the the repositories who are getting access to it via their institutions. Um, I think sometimes as well um, we find that um, the institutional repositories are using um, DOIs from DataCite, which is another DOI registration agency. So as such, they're not, um, you, need to, you need to be a Crossref member and assigning Crossref DOIs to participate in the service. So I think there is that, um, there are some things to kind of check with us um, and that we work with organizations to check before they sign up to participate. So I think that's a good thing just to, again, to contact our support team about and check if, you're, if you'd be applicable um, to participate before kind of thinking about that. Right, thank you, Rachel. 
Uh, due to the interest of time, I'm afraid that we may not be able to answer all the questions. However, for those questions that not have been answered, we will answer them offline, and we will post all the questions onto the Crossref communities for your future uh, retrieval. So, uh, some other information. We are going to have another session, uh, I mean, the next session of the series, and which will be on the research data. The topic will be research data and value and authority for academic publishers, and that will happen on 27th of August, 10 a.m. Malaysian time or 9 a.m. Indonesia time. So the presentation will be focused on opportunities that academic publishers have for enhancing their value and authority through research data management. And uh, yes, Rachel has uh, the link on the slide. However, I will also post the link to the on the chat box. So anyone who haven't registered, you can just simply click on the link to register for the next section. Now, uh, thank you again for your uh, Rachel and Vanessa for this uh, informative sharing. And thank you all for our participants, for your time and participation. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and please stay safe. And I hope to see you in the next section. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Iris.